This is a continuation of the previous tutorial, which is a tutorial for how to play a game. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the table functions, as well as the card viewer, as well as the log. The first section is the table. This is where most of the action in the game happens. At the very top of the table, you can see a plus button, which is used to toggle the visibility of view controls of the table. So with that uh, visible, you can see that there's the ability to mark on the table. If you click on that, you enter in marking mode, and then a left click and drag allows you to draw on the table. If you just do a single click, it makes an X. And then you can erase that by hitting the erase button. You can also draw by clicking and dragging the middle click button on your mouse. And instead of hitting the erase button, a simple escape key will erase things. The next button is the zoom key. If you again left click it, you can get into zoom mode, where if you left click and drag on the table, you can zoom in. Also, you can use your scroll wheel to zoom in, or you can on an iPad use a pinch to zoom. And to set the default zoom back to 100%, you can just hit the 100% button. And to get out of zoom mode, you hit escape key, or hit the button, the X button. Uh, similarly, to the zoom button is the scale button. The difference between those two is evident when you have a couple cards on the table. So if I have a couple cards on the table, the zoom button acts like a camera where you're zooming in everything, whereas the scale button acts, you're changing the scale of the cards themselves. The camera position stays the same, but the size of the cards themselves increase and decrease. And to get out of that, you can hit 100% and zoom 100%, and that's the default. The default uh, keybind for scaling uh, is to hold down the control button and then the mouse acts like a scale. If you don't hold down the control button, it acts like a zoom. The uh, next setting is pan. That allows you to move the table around and zero gets it back to the origin. And the key bind for panning is to hold down the Alt key, and then while you middle click and drag, you can pan that way. And then to get it back to zero, you can hit the zero button. Uh, the next button over is the tilt, and that will allow you to tilt the table to a 3D view. And to tilt it with the scroll wheel, you just hold down the Alt button and then scroll to tilt the table. And you can also use the page up and page down keys to tilt up and tilt back. And you can use the uh, home key to toggle quickly between flat and tilted. And again, you can always go back to the zero degrees with the single button as well. And there's one more thing you can do as far as view preferences for the table it is called a quick zoom. And that is a combination of zoom and pan and it's meant to be a quick look at the table at something. So if you control and middle click someplace, you can quickly zoom onto an area, including all the cards around it. And while you have your mouse click held down, you can see the zoom. And then when you release, it goes back to normal. And those are the table view controls. Cards can be dragged onto the table. They can they can be dragged from place to place, and they can be dragged onto the corresponding uh, game zone tabs. To move cards or multiple cards, you can move one simply like that, or you can select them with, you can do a box select and then uh, move them like that, or you can uh, do a hold down the shift key and shift click individual ones. And while one is collect selected, you can toggle uh, it with another shift click.
You can double click a card to rotate it, or you can control click it to flip it over. While you're moving a card, such as from hand, you can hold the control button to make it land on the table face down, or you can, while you're moving it around, hold the Alt button to make it uh, land on the table rotated. Those are not mutually exclusive. While you're dragging a card, if you hold both the Control and the Alt keys, when you drop it, it will be both rotated and flipped. And when you're uh, modifying a card, such as with a double click, uh, if you box select multiple cards and you do an operation on one of them, like turn it face down, uh, you will apply the same functions to all of the selected cards. If you want to perform a general function, you can right click on the table and there's a whole bunch of different functions you can do, like uh, spawn a card, you can draw a card, you can uh, unturn all the cards that you have, you can uh, roll a dice, you can do a bunch of different functions that are specific to your plugin. You can also right click on cards, which brings up a different menu than if you right click on an area that's not a card. When you right click on the table, you get the general functions, and when you right click on a card, you get the card specific functions. So for example, if you want to add a counter to a card, you can do it like that with the right click menu. You can move a card. You can copy a card with the clone function, which makes a complete copy of the card, including uh, all tokens attached to it. You can make the card hover if your uh, plugin supports that, and you can see it's hovering there. Uh, you can select multiple cards, and uh, you can clear them to their default states. You can do a bunch of different functions, so make sure you check out what options are available for the plugin you're using with right-clicking on a card. Those functions I just mentioned, the general functions and the card-specific functions, some of those functions appear as buttons below the table. The first buttons that you see on the left are the general functions. So you see ready all and draw and roll those are functions that will appear here. But not all functions appear there. Only the most commonly used functions, as chosen by the plugin designer, uh, appear as buttons below. But the complete list is available if you use the menu. And similarly, for the card functions, like uh, green counter and edit note and things like that, some of those will be down here. There is a slight difference between how you use uh, general functions and card functions at when they're buttons below the table. With the card functions, the, clicking these buttons will apply that to the selected cards. For example, if I select these two cards and I hit the green plus button, it adds a counter to both of them. And that's true with all of the functions. So if I have this card and this card selected and I wanted to let's say turn them over that would apply to them. There's a second way of using these buttons. You can use them just as I said by selecting cards or you can right click on them to enter into that mode of input. For example, if I right click on the red button, red plus one button, you'll see it gets selected you'll also get some feedback over here that you're in that mode. And then each subsequent single left click onto a card will perform that function on the clicked card. So there's two different ways of doing it. A uh, quick recap, you can get in the mode where you select them and just left click, or you can get in the mode where you right click a particular button and then subsequently any card that you click on, whether it's selected or not, gets that function applied to it. To edit a note, you can select a card and hit the Edit Note button, and you'll see it pops up a little dialog. So I'll just write a little note saying Test. And there's an option to uh, select multiple cards, and you can have it copy to selected cards. And then you'll see a little N 
at the top of the card, indicating that there's a note there. And when you mouse over it, you can see what the note is. Another thing you can do is add a vector to a card. Uh, unlike a, uh, a, a marking of a line, uh, those are meant to be temporary little markings on the table, and escape gets rid of those. If you want to indicate a direction on a card, which some plugins use, you can uh, right-click the card and add a vector. And then when that's added, for example, let's say I want this card to point to the left. Then uh, whenever you move the card around, uh, that goes with it. And uh, that is a completely different thing than marking, and that will not disappear when you hit escape key. In order to get rid of that, you need to, uh, you can clear the card or you can add, change the vector and put it near the origin of the card, and then it's gone. In the next section, I'll be talking about the game zone viewer. Below the table, below the functions for the cards, is the game zone viewer. If your plugin has communal zones, such as, like if you were playing poker, there's one deck that all players share, those would be listed first if your deck has, if your uh, game plugin has them. So in this sample plugin, you see communal, that's the communal zone. And if I were to drag a card to there, say so that's a communal zone, and all players have equal access to that. If you look at the other tabs here, these correspond to the different players. Uh, each player has a hand, each player has a deck. Uh, here is the indicator of which player you're currently viewing, and you can select that over here with the pop-up pull-down menu, or you can cycle through them with these uh, arrow buttons next to it. And you can also select the game zone you're viewing by clicking on the corresponding tab. And similar to the tabs you saw in the game stats section, you see the same sort of visibility indicators like the blue eyes, the blue and red eyes uh, for a zone that is visible to its owner and people who aren't its owner. And again, you see that the deck is not visible to anyone. You can obviously see the count of the number of cards in the corresponding zone. If you want to and take a look at specific functions for those, you can double-click the uh, tab, and there's a bunch of different options. Uh, this is, I double-clicked on the deck tab uh, to bring up that window, and you can shuffle it, you can discard randomly, you can do a whole bunch of different things. You can reveal the top X cards here, uh, and how that works is there's several different functions. If you wanted to reveal the top five cards to your to the owner of it, you would use this section here, and you're revealing to the owner the top five cards, and then that fills in this button here, reveal to his own owner the top five cards, and then you click the button, and that's what it does. And that's a window that will pop up, and you can resize it as you want, and you can move, take cards out of it, and you can change the visibility of the zone, you can play a card randomly, you can randomly discard a card, and when you're done, there's the option to return it to different places. You can return it to the top of the deck, you can return it and not shuffle it. Anyway, those options are part of that menu, which you can see there. And you'll see you can uh, see the cards underneath it, because it's transparent. When you draw cards, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, different cards here, and if you have a whole bunch of cards in an area, you can fan them in and out by using the middle click and drag. In, in case uh, there's not enough space and you want to see more cards. And you can get out of that with a, a middle click and drag. The final part of the middle column is the chat log. Obviously there's a place where you can type in a message Toss. and other people can see your chat messages. But you can also use this field to execute chat log slash commands. For example, if you type slash roll 
and then hit the return key, uh, you'll roll a die. You can also type more complicated commands, such as slash roll five. That will roll five different dice. Uh, Lackey will even sum and calculate the average of the dice. Uh, there's an awful lot of functionality you can do with slash commands. You can send a deck to another player, you can send them a playmat image, you can spawn any number of tokens, you can spawn any specific card, you can pretty much do anything you could do w with the other parts of the interface, but through slash commands. If you wanted to change your, uh, your health stat, for example, your first player stat, you type slash plus five to increase it by five. There are so many different chat log uh, commands. There is a specific page you can check out. It's, uh, this is the URL. Uh, it's lackeyccg.com slash tutorial log commands .html. At the very top of the chat section, there is a plus button, which toggles the visibility of the canned message buttons. The canned message buttons are uh, quick ways to store uh, saved canned messages. So instead of saying, uh, I'll attack every turn, instead of typing attack every time you want to attack, you can just save it to a button and then attack. you click it once. So this will save you a lot of time if you type frequent things, like uh, common things like Pass the play. Pass. Go ahead. Another thing you can save there is any of the can message scripts. So for example, if you had a function, let me just uh, load a deck here. So if you had a function to draw seven cards, you could store that and then whenever you clicked it, you draw seven cards. You can edit these can message buttons in one of two ways. The uh, quick way is to type whatever you want, like the word test, and then uh, instead of hitting return, which would send it as a chat message, you can instead right click on one of these buttons and that'll set it. There. Test. Test. Uh, the other way is to go into the preference uh, chat and macro section. And that's another way you can set those preferences. If there's ever a URL posted in the chat, you can click it, and that'll open up that URL in your default browser. Uh, if you ever, ever see uh, a card name in the chat, you can mouse over the card name and see what that card does in the preview. Uh, and the final thing I want to mention is if you right-click the field, you can see the timestamps.